Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. I'm now answering question number one from the June 2018 GCE 9MA002 paper two. Uh, this is from the A-level in England, the UK syllabus, uh, which is slightly different from the um, international A-level in its format and the way the, you know, it's a linear rather than a module, uh, modular, sorry, um, uh, qualification. But the content is very much similar, and the books are very much similar as well. You'll notice the same exercises in, in most of the books. But um, th this question relates to what we do in P3. So this will be like under my P3 uh, collection of questions on functions and graphs. Um, so this question here, it's telling us to find GG5. Okay, so find GG5, that's part A. Now, one of the things is they've given us this function. This function is a reciprocal function, as we can see, because X is in the denominator. And they've given us some information written next to it, which is very important for us to take note of. It will definitely have some bearing on the question later on, for sure. So when they write something like this next to the you know, uh, function, please take note of it. Don't ignore it. Think it's there for just making the question look nice. It's not decoration. It's there for a reason, and we'll see the reason as we go on through the question. So the first part of it is just says find g g5. So what does that mean? Basically, it means find what g5 is, find the value of g5, and substitute that value back into the function g. That's what it means, and find what that is. So the first step is to find what g5 is. So let's find what g5 is. Now g5 is found by replacing the x here with five wherever you find it in the function. So instead of x, I'm gonna write two times five. Instead of two x, it's two, two times five, plus three over, instead of x minus three, it's gonna be five minus three. So we can say g5 is equal to 10 plus, uh, that's a five, not a three. 10 plus five over two, so that's 15 over two. So it's 15 over two, we can leave it like that, that's fine. So we can say, therefore, uh, g g5, is equal to, uh, no, we have to now substitute this into, that's 15 over two, that's G5. All right, now we have to find G, G5, sorry. So now we've got to put, instead of G5, we've got to put 15 over two inside the function that we have. So we've got to find G, G5. So this is G5. Now we've got to find G, G5, so it's G of 15 over two. So to find that, we have to replace the x in the function, original function g, with, again, 15 over 2. This is 2 times, instead of x, we're going to put 15 over 2, plus 5 over, and this is 15 over 2, minus 3. So 2 times 15 over 2 gives you 15. That's 15 plus 5 over, and this is going to be, you can make this under one denominator, which is 6. That's going to be 15, um, no, one denominator, which is 2, sorry. I'm doing one denominator which is two so that's 15 over 2 minus and I have to multiply this by 2 so it's 6 over 2 so you end up with 20 over 15 minus 6 which is 9 over 2 which is going to be 20 times 2 over 9 which is 40 over 9 okay so that there's the answer to part a we can say therefore we can say g g5 is equal to 40 over 9 you can leave your answer like that that's perfectly fine and there's the answer to part a then it says state the range of g okay state means something where it doesn't really require too much calculation that's what state means okay so state the range of the function g so for us to state the range of this function okay we have to i mean first of all the range uh, refers to all the y values it takes. That's what we should understand. Okay, it refers to all the y values that it takes. So if you're thinking about it, it's all where it exists on the y-axis. Okay, now some students are asking me about, you know, this is only worth one mark. And do we have to go through the whole process of sketching the graph in order for us to work out the range? Okay, now the best way for you to picture um, the range of any function is to think about the sketch of the graph. Now the problem is if it takes you a long time to think about what the sketch looks like, that's where the problem lies. Okay, it's not the problem in actually sketching it. It's does, sketching something like this should not take you very long if you get used to it. Now the first thing is this is an improper fraction. 
Okay, it's an improper fraction because the numerator and the denominator both have the same order. If the, if the order of the numerator is greater than or equal to the order of the denominator, they both, the, this is an improper fraction, and it will split up into something plus something over the denominator. So it's going to be a type of uh, function which has a horizontal and a vertical asymptote. Now, the, they're both easy to find in this, these cases, really easy. These type of questions, you'll always have the order being the same if it's an improper fraction in the type of questions that we'll be dealing with. And you can see that when you divide the x um, terms, you're going to get a 2. Okay, when you divide the x terms, you're going to get a 2. That means the value of a here is going to be 2 for sure. Okay, if you were to divide them, you're going to get 2. The value of a is going to be 2 for sure. We don't even have to split it up into an improper fraction for us to know that. Okay, the value of a is definitely going to be a 2. We should know that. For example, if that's a 3 and that's a 1, that will be 3. If that's a 5, that's a 1, that will be 5. If that's a 5 and that's a 2, it will be 2.5. So I know that the, 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 vert, the horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals 2 for sure. All right? So that, that's something that doesn't take us too long to determine. So y equals 2 is the horizontal asymptote. Okay, so that's the horizontal asymptote. The vertical asymptote is always what makes the denominator become 0. So when the, the vertical asymptote here is going to be x equals 3. Because when I put 3 instead of x, I'm going to get the denominator to be 0. So whatever x value makes the denominator 0, for example, it was 2x plus 5 was in the denominator, then x equals minus 2.5 would be the asymptote. So here x equals 3 is the asymptote. Okay, so there's an asymptote over here, x equals 3. Okay, so that's the other asymptote. All right, so that's your x coordinate, that's your x axis, that's your y axis. Now, a reciprocal graph will always look something like this. Either like this, or it will look like this. Okay, now, here the, it's going to be, this, this here is going to be a positive. Okay, it's going to be a plus here in front of this. All right, now how can we determine that for sure? Well, what we could do is we could um, find out when x equals 0, what happens? Where does it hit the y-axis? Okay, so if it hits the y-axis somewhere above y equals 2, then it's going to be something like this because it will go, it's going to go above y equals 2. If it's going to hit the x, the y-axis below x equals 2, y equals 2, it's going to go somewhere like this. Okay, so it's going to be that shape. So you have to try and think about where it goes. Now, all of this stuff, it sounds like, oh, no, it's like it's going to take a long time, but it won't take a long time once you've got used to knowing how these graphs work. Okay, so now um, when x equals 0, y equals minus 5 over 3. 5 over minus 3. So we can say when x equals 0, y equals minus 5 over 3. So it's going to go down here somewhere. All right, so we know for sure that it's going to be on this side and on this side that it goes. And we can even see when x when y equals 0, we could find out what x is. x equals minus 2.5. So that's minus 2.5. When I put y equals 0, that becomes 0. So we can work that out. But you don't need to work that out. So our graph... I mean, the reason why I had to work out where it goes to work out, is it on this side or that side? But, you know, uh, you know, is it on this side or is it on that side? We had to work that out. That's something important for us to work out. We worked out that it's on this side. Now, the other thing we should realize here is that this graph only exists where x is greater than or equal to 5. So that's important. So now what I'm going to do is, once I've determined exactly where it goes, I'm going to get rid of all of this side. I don't care about this side now. Okay, because this is where x equals 3 up to here. I want from where x is greater than 5. So I can even get rid of these parts of it. I only care from where x is equal to 5, which is going to be that point there, which I want to draw as a closed circle because it says equal to. And that refers or that corresponds to this value of y, which is what we found when x equals 5, y equals, in the beginning, when x equals 5, y equals 15 over 2, which is 7.5. Okay, let's, where does that come from? So that's 15 over 2 or 7.5. Okay, so that's 15 over 2. You can say 7.5. And this asymptote is y equals 2. So the graph will only exist between these two points. Between everywhere above y equals 2 up to and including 
15 over 2, which is 7.5, because it's, it's going to go closer and closer to this asymptote without ever touching it. Okay, so the asymptote, it approaches, and it gets closer and closer to it, so it will never ever reach 2, but it will reach 5, that's where our domain starts, so we have to stop there. Okay, so we can say that the range of this function, the range is always the values you can take on the y, it's between these two values, which are between 2 and 15 over 2. So we can say the range of g is going to be between 2, not equal to, and you could say g of x less than or equal to 15 over 2. This has to have the equal sign with it. Right, so this is worth one mark, but there's actually a few different things that we have to be careful about here. So even though it's worth one mark, you know, it does require a bit more of understanding. Now, some students are saying it's worth one mark, and it's a state. It's something that we should be able to do without any kind of calculation. But, I mean, once you've got used to understanding how these, uh, you know, what this graph looks like, which you should be able to... No, first it's reciprocal, so it's going to either be this, this, or this. Okay, it's going to be either on this side or that side, or that side or that side. So it's a reciprocal graph, so it's going to be either of these two. Secondly, that it has a vertical asymptote when x equals 3. Thirdly, the, ver the horizontal asymptote is when y equals 2, because when you divide the x terms, you get that. All right. And the fact that the domain starts from x equals 5, and we already worked out what what g g of x is when x equals 5 which is 15 over 2 that was in the working for the last question right so you know i don't really see a quicker way of 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 doing this um if somebody has a quicker way of doing this fine let me know we can discuss it but you know i always prefer for you to understand what's going on to be able to see what's happening there might be some ways of memorizing certain things Okay, like for example, what we did there to work out the, the, the horizontal asymptote, that's fine. Um, as for working out that this is 15 over 2, just by looking at this, we need to know what we did earlier and we have to have some understanding that the domain starts from 5. So that's why you know, we've got to find out what that limit is. And the other limit is for the horizontal asymptote, which is x, y equals 2. Um, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm trying to think of a way of doing this in a quicker kind of way but i don't i don't think there's anything more anything quicker than this really to be honest there might well be but um i think what the problem that some students have is they are not confident in sketching the graph quickly okay that needs practice you know you to to be able to sketch a graph quickly it needs a bit of practice you have to understand what's going on and as i said you can spot the asymptotes just by looking at the equation y equals 2, x equals 3, okay? And then you can figure out, is it going to cross the y-axis, you know, um, when the if you ignore the domain first, would it cross the x-axis uh, or the y-axis below or above the asymptote? Here it's going to be when x equals 0. You can see that also visually, that's minus 5, so it's been negative. It's below y equals 2. Even if it was positive, as long as it's below y equals 2, you know it's going to be in this section rather than this section. So you can draw this part here, and then the part that we need is going to be up here. So then you can say, okay, we're starting from x equals 5. What's y when x equals 5? We worked out 15 over 2, and it won't go, it will go closer to the asymptote and never reach it. Okay, so, you know, sometimes I give a mark, uh, or the questions, a certain question, a certain number of marks. Sometimes it's only worth one mark because they don't want the students to lose too many marks on that particular question because it's something where many students make mistakes. Like a lot of the proof questions are worth less marks than the amount of work you've got put into them sometimes because maybe they feel that the students will lose too many marks for that. There could be a reason for it. But, uh, you know, it's something that here I, I can't see a quicker way than what I've just explained to you here in how to find the uh, range of the function. Um, so that's what I'm going to tell. I'm going to explain it. Now, parts for part C, it says find the inverse of the function g stating its domain. So the first step in doing that is to replace the g of x with y. So y equals 2x plus 5 divided by x minus 3. Second step is to, when we're finding the inverse, the, the method that I like to do at this stage is change the x and y. Uh, wherever it says y, call it x. Wherever it says um, x, call it y. 
So you have 2y plus 5 over y minus 3. So y minus 3. And then we want to make y the subject of this. When we make y the subject of this, what we're left with will be the form of the inverse. So I've got to multiply x by y minus 3. So x times y minus 3 equals 2y plus 5. That gives me x y minus 3x equals 2y plus 5. I need to make y the subject, so I'll bring the y's together on this side. So I have xy minus 2y equals, and that's going to be 3x plus 5. Add 3x to both sides. I can take y as common from these two terms. I have x minus 2, and this is 3x plus 5. Therefore, we can say that y is equal to 3x plus 5 over x minus 2. So we can say the inverse of function g is equal to this expression 3x plus 5 over x minus 2. And the domain of this function is the same as the range of the original function. The domain of the inverse is the range of the original function because when you find the inverse function, as you can see, we're swapping the x and y's round. So we're swapping the domains and the ranges. So we know that the, 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 original range, the range of the original function is this. So that's the same thing as the domain of this function, but we do not write g of x or no, neither do we write inverse g of x, you write x because the domain is referring to the x axis. If you were to write g of x um, or y here even, you will definitely lose marks. Just as if you were to write x here instead of g of x or y, you would lose marks as well. So there is the answer. Uh, this has to include that, just like it does there. That is the domain of our inverse function, the same as the range of the original. It's always like that. So there's the answer to part C, and that you know um, concludes this this particular question. All right, and we can even see here, uh, you know, like for example, the the uh, y asymptote, the 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 um, Horizontal asymptote is y equals 3, okay, and the um, vertical asymptote is x equals 2, opposite of what we had here, right? It's like the inverse. Here, the horizontal asymptote is, is y equals 3, and the, horizontal as the vertical asymptote is x equals 2. So it's like the opposite way around. Yeah, so that's what happens when you do the inverse. The x and y's swap over. The domain and range swap over. Okay, so this would be, this would basically be a reflection of this in the line y equals x if we draw it properly. Okay, so there's the answer to that question, part C. All right, so about part B, as I said, um, personally, I think the problem that people have with this, it's only worth one month, so it's not worth doing all of this. Um, a lot of this can be done in your head even, okay? Like finding the asymptotes can be done in your head, figuring out where it, where it would cross the x, the y axis, so you know whether it's going to be this way or that way can be done in your head all right so it really doesn't take that much and as i said some questions they don't associate too many marks with them because many students mess them up so they don't want people to lose too many marks on those particular questions so that could be a reason why they they put state the range of okay and some of the work has already been done already in the part a where we found you know the limit uh, the value of y where the limit of x is which is what this 15 over 2 is there so um you know, and then working out that the other asymptote is y, y equals 2 is between those two values. So it's something which, you know, picturing it by drawing a diagram helps you to understand it. You know, and it's something which uh, if you just practice drawing these reciprocal graphs a little bit, it should be something that comes to you quickly uh, in the exam. Okay, so um, I hope that was helpful. Thank you for watching. Uh, other questions from this particular paper? you'll find in the playlist that appears over here. Uh, you'll find a link to uh, the questions dealing with this topic of functions um, in uh, P3. Playlist will be in this region over here for the International A-Level P3. Uh, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link over here and you can watch the video, the link for which will appear above here where you will see how to use my channel in an efficient manner depending on what course you're doing. Thank you for watching and see you soon.